We all know those moments in a relationship or a new job when you have just made a commitment and they know they've got you and that's when they let the mask drop. They have a little devaluing remark or they just let you know that they're in control in some way. And that is actually, that first mask drop is when you have to leave. Because there's just gonna be more and more bullshit to come if you don't leave that first moment. Now, it took me a while to learn this. It took a lot of mask dropping for me to realize this. But for instance, last year at this time around, really a month later, but at this time, I moved, I relocated for a job. I had had so much dread in doing so. It was, it was because I feared going back to being drained really because I'm an introvert and it's so draining to be around people 40 hours a week and I, I really just work better when I'm in the basement producing and sending it off. So I knew that about myself and yet I pushed myself to do this because I thought, you know, you need to get out of the basement and you need to, you know, work in person again. And so I moved. And a month in, I had this devaluing remark on my work performance that was um, unequivocally, very clearly not true. It was really just to put me in my place, really. It was really more that I was excited and confident and the, the people in charge, they wanted, they, they actually resented that I had any remarks or new, had a newness and a, an eye toward, this is, this is a, this is like, kind of I had a, a lot of, oh, this is, this would be a good idea. We need to do this or, I just had a lot of that kind of energy and they really wanted me to be, step in as like a, in a servile role and validate their greatness. But I was noticing things that could be better. Now I wasn't saying them, but I was, I was trying to just, you know, share feedback when asked. So what I realized, so that, so what happened was the mask dropped when she made that comment because the comment was, um, your writing is subpar and my writing is not subpar and anybody anybody that reads it anybody that see uh, it's just it's frankly it was just a comment that was blatantly untrue just, just blatantly false and actually just trying to make me feel worthless because it it wasn't constructive it wasn't any it was just that you're writing a subpar as a broad statement and when I received that comment, I said, my writing is not subpar. And then I said, this, what you're referring to here is an exact quote from the client that I'm reflecting in the website copy. And then I said, and you, when you change my content, you actually change it to something more generic sounding, whereas I'm trying to have it stand out. And I defended myself unequivocally because I knew I was right. And like I said too, I have plenty of flaws. I have plenty of things to work on, but sorry, not my writing in this circumstance because my writing in this circumstance was not, it was a for a, a psychological behavioral health and I was being micromanaged by them changing it to say all of these kind of pat phrases about it. They, like I would say something about like, you're not alone. Um, and then I have actually specific examples of, you know, when you're in a state of depression or in a funk, there's certain things you do, like, you know, you hit snooze, you do certain things. So I was giving, I was giving actually a story and a picture of um, the, the people that are seeking psychological help. I'm actually going into, um, from that state of being at a low point and then being at your aspirational point and feeling better. So I was viewing them as humans, not robots. And the, and that was reflecting what that business wanted as well. So I knew I was, I, there's just, I wasn't going to take this mask drop of suddenly trying to make me feel bad and I wasn't going to accept it. 
uh, because they were she was changing things to be actually much more generic and worse and kind of just making it like mental illness affects everyone and you may not know your family member like that kind of talk that it's like anybody that will that will be on you know 20 out of 30 sites that kind of talk and the 10 that don't have that generic talk are going to be the ones that people feel like a human with who is actually humanized not dehumanized and they're gonna see oh these people see me uh, this this is something I want to help my, with my angst or my depression or the problems I'm dealing with anyway so so the, the reason I'm going into this is that uh, yes it was great that I defended myself on the spot but I also should have had the other power move of not staying because as soon as somebody is trying to put you in your place and even views you that way and even views the client and the, the people that are going into mental health the fact that they're dehumanizing them and they're belittling me that's revealing of a person that has no regard so try, and then you're they're putting you in the energy of trying to get their respect when they're not gonna give it because you moved for them and now they're pushing up the power to let you know you're nothing that's no place to stay whether it's a relationship or a job and as soon as you get that inkling get out now I, the reason I stayed is this person did apologize because I I showed that the client had said this and how I had done that and so they knew because another person was in the room that I, I had unequivocally stood up for myself and proved that I would not take that I would not accept that devaluing your mark and that I was actually correct because I was reflect I was writing in a way that honored the client wasn't just generic changing things so anyway but even though I still knew from that moment on that because she thought that because she made a point to make me feel bad she was not trustworthy to me and I never thought I thought I do not that I, I did I couldn't help it I was begrudging toward her which is why it, it's never a good management style to to insult someone especially it, when it's not specific just insulting them all around and and it, it you know you could have probably said any other thing to me that I would have probably that I probably would have taken on the doubt but when I just don't take I just don't have that in my self concept of myself that I'm at all bad at writing because I'm very good at writing and I've always had I've always had that validated and sh and I've and I just that's just sorry that's just not it that's, I've got tons of flaws I've got tons of weaknesses sorry I am a great writer I take pride in it and I was I was honoring the client and I felt really great about it because I was actually really excited about uh, not just having the same old same old kind of generic copy so sorry you didn't get me um, but anyway, but I I, sh I knew I should have known and had the power move to leave right away because all it all I did was it all I did was I that created resentment in me, and then always having that woman always wanted her ego validated and wanted me to to succumb to serve, whereas I was never going to serve someone who didn't respect me. This is like this is management 101. This is doming 101. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get someone to submit to you by brat by insulting them. Like I mean, maybe some people like degrading, you know, some I mean I guess I'm getting into a sex thing, but anyway, some people like degrading and humiliating things. Other people though, they wanna feel respected and honored and treasured, and then they're you're you're then you're worthy, then you will submit. And then some people might say, well, you always have to submit to your boss. It's like, no, there's, you, stop viewing yourself in such a disempowered, I'm nothing, ever, I mean, I'm really tired of millennials um, being infantilized as we are, we are, we are now leaders that ought to be, we, we, we don't need to be infantilized like we need to be interns forever. I mean, it's, it's getting really old 
I, we can't always be servile to the egos of people who they've got to realize how the world is changing and they've got to realize that you get respect from giving it. You do not get someone's respect and servitude or submit, submitting by putting them down. And especially in a place where, sorry, it's not true. Um, and, and, and they're gonna, and if they don't take, they don't take that, then you hate them more because they're, you again, want to dominate. So you're not thinking about the good of your business. You're just thinking about your ego. So that's, um, anyway. Another time the mask dropped with me is I prepaid for this coach and he was, he had, he was flaking. He was not showing up to the sessions I prepaid for, but then telling me that I, he, he can read in my energy and that I need to be in a positive energy to meet with him or something, you know? And then I, I, okay, that was a mask drop moment where I thought I had, I had said, I don't want to, I said to him, I don't want to keep going with this if you're going to be flaky. It is, this is a professional agreement and you're, you're, because he is, he's doing a weird gaslighty thing like, you're not positive enough to meet. Okay, but I pay, this isn't a, this isn't a, a game. Like, I need, I need a refund. You're, you're flaking repeatedly. It's fine if you flake, if you have to at one point, but you keep doing it. But then he, I had that master drop moment. But then, but, but then see, I, I kept with this too long because I thought, oh, well, maybe, uh, maybe if I just stick with this, he won't be this way. Maybe, maybe this master moment is just uh, what he's going through at this time. And I thought, and maybe if I even prepay more, he will see that I am mean business, so he'll definitely show up. No, no, don't pay more, no. So... That was a mass drop moment where should have said, okay, I'm out, not gonna pay you any more money. I need refund for what I have. Cut my losses and got out because uh, that's, that's not uh, living in integrity and it's, uh, you don't wanna be thinking, oh, maybe if I, maybe this person, it will change and be incentivized by the fact that I show up or give more money. No, no. Once the mask drops, pay attention. Get out, get out. And then the, this is the same. If you get out then, they will then be willing, they, that's when they'll pr try to prove their integrity, but watch only by ac actions, not words. Like that woman delivered an apology, but that was never, she was always going to hate that I stood up for myself and defended myself and was probably what she considered, um, you know, not, not being dominated, not go, not being, uh, what's the word, uh, when you're not going along with the boss. Well, anyway, so I, she already knew she, even though she said one thing, we, the grudge was set for both ways. Same with this guy. Once he realized he could invalidate me by saying, Oh, you're just not ready to have this meeting. You're positive. Then he, he had the power. You, uh, but what, and, and what people say when the mask drops does not matter. Watch what they do and be aware of how you actually feel. Do you feel as though you are thinking, well, I just have to kind of give this more time. Like this seems awful, but I just gotta, gotta keep going with it. Maybe it'll get better. No. Same with it, you know, with dating or day, early dating, honeymoon stage, it's only going to get worse. So. It's got to be really good at first. You got to feel like this is a really, really uh, natural and affirming and warm energy. Not, uh, not feeling dutiful, not feeling uh, kind of scared or hesitant. So when the mask drops, believe them, get out fast. Whether it's a job, a relationship, coaching dynamic, professional, get out.